First, um, you know, what we use in the management of our own clients' accounts is, is going to be is more complex than what we're going to discuss today. Um, what we want to be doing is to give you kind of a walkthrough of a logical process and without all the financial nuances and provide you with a really a simple tool that you can use to calculate uh, you could, with a spreadsheet program. And um, it's something that, you know, hopefully you can apply uh, if it's a value even down to just managing your own 401k. So with that said, um, for every study that we look at today, we're going to use this four-step quantitative approach. It's very simple. And everything starts with price. So we're going to take in smooth price uh, to remove short-term abnormalities from it by using a 200-day exponential moving average. That's number one. Now, the, of that 200-day exponential moving average, we will be calculating the 50-day rate of change of that smooth price. So now my new indicator really is uh, I've, I've, I've left, I'm starting with price, I've turned it into a 200-day exponential moving average, and now I'm calculating the 50-day rate of change of that 200-day exponential moving average. So now um, it didn't matter if the price of all the, of the stock was $100 a share or $200 a share or or two dollars a share, or an ETF, or anything else, we've we've turned this down into a ratio, or this rate of change, which is really a kind of a percentage. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the investments with that are within our study. We're going to rank them from highest to lowest, and we're going to invest in either the, the top performer or the top performers, depending upon what the goals of, of our study, or how many funds you want to be invested in in your portfolio. We define this as, as using slow velocity as, as an investment uh, tool, as an, as an investment uh, yeah, approach. And this is redundant, but again, we're saying that from this presentation, we're calculating the 200-day exponential moving average, then turning the 50-day rate of change. And this rate of change, I want you to be, know that rate of change is another word for velocity. So that's why we, we like to use velocity in, in, in our, um, as we explain things. Uh, rate of change is nothing more than today's price minus yesterday, or in this case, 50, the price 50 days ago, divided by the price 50 days ago. That gives us the rate of change or our velocity calculation. And because we're taking this rate of change of a 200-day exponential moving average, we, we, we refer to it as slow velocity. Um, and you'll find that by using or using this kind of a measuring tool, slow velocity will actually um, help you identify what we call long-term durable trends in the market, the type of trends that, that you know, take off and they, they go for a, a long period of time or as long as, you know, they, as they possibly can. And, and we want to, those are the trends that we want to capture. And, and let me just say that, you know, this 200-day exponential moving average, the, the nice part about that and what the advantage of it is, is a lot of times there's these really short-term moves in the market that tend to kind of fake us out. We may get out of a great position that was really in a long-term durable trend too early. And, and you know, we're trying to avoid those, those kind of problems. So let's first off take a look at a 50-day rate of change of just the S&P 500. And that's what, that's what we have here. This is just taking purely the price. Forget the 200-day exponential moving average. I'm just showing you what a 50-day rate of change it, uh, of, that, of, of the uh, S&P 500 index looks like. And it's very choppy. You know, it's really kind of ugly looking. And I counted it up, and you know, you can see on this chart, the blue line is that 50-day rate of change. The red line, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, but the uh, the you can see the line moving across the center, the zero line. I calculated that that uh, I was counting this up. This is, by the way, you can see the dates across the bottom. This is a six-year window going back to October of 2005. And, and actually, this 50-day rate of change crossed the zero line at least 38 times that I counted in this six-year window. It makes me think a lot of it. If, if you're looking at the rate of change, it's the think about the average person. You know, I think back trying to manage their 401k, and they they get their you know rates of return every month, and they're trying to be in the best fund that's making the most money, and and you know hopping from fund to fund that's making money possibly, and you know that it's just a it's just a losing strategy. We're trying to identify. This is just kind of visually clarifies that it, that you want to find these longer term trends. So here's what this is. This is the exact. Uh, this is now what you're looking at is the 50 day rate of change of the 200 day exponential moving average. You'll notice it's really smooth. 
And a friend once said to me, you know, whoever has the smoothest, smoothest data wins. There's, there's value in smoothing out uh, of data and identifying these trends. You'll notice in this case that the, the 200-day moving average here, um, uh, the, excuse me, that our, our slow velocity, better said, only crossed the zero line seven times uh, in this six-year period a lot less. And so I, I think it helps to bring the point that, that it's keeping you in these trends a little bit longer. Um, let's go on to the next, next page here.